happy 25th, I mean, happy 40th anniversary, Pac-Man. Wow, I feel old now. But Clyde! Clyde's oh, not definitely here. That's loud. Clyde isn't in this game? Uh, Clyde actually is in this game, but he's not going to be in the look at it, if that means anything. Because yes, ladies and gentlemen, these guys. as I said in our Pac-Man World 2 commentary, I don't like this game enough to really d dedicate an entire play playthrough or commentary to it. This is Pac-Man World 3 for the PS2. Yeah. It's this is a weird and most people remember too. It's the odd stepchild of the Pac-Man World trilogy, and the fact that well, first of all, they got a different developer in the form of Blitz Games, and secondly, say whatever you will about this game compared to the rest of the Pac-Man series, it definitely tried to be bold and you know different, brash, sort of ambitious without with at least half of the effort. And I mostly say that because at one point in this game's development, it originally was going to be called Pac-Man Adventures, and had Don Bluth in the mix. Whoa. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I remember that with all the... I almost forgot about that. Oh. Another part of its ambition is that there's voice acting. Ooh. <gasps> Let's see. Hey, Miss Pac-Man. I mean, the first... The... Well, I mean, okay. More voice acting Junior. than there was before. Like, everybody talks in this game, for better or worse. This full dialogue cutscenes. And... Actually, except for Junior. He doesn't speak at all. Oh, here he is. Did someone say cake? That is not Pac-Man. That, 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 that's the part where the audience claps as he shows up. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Fun fact, I was, like, uh, considering adding in the whole Hotel Mario no after that, but... I thought you were about to say you were contemplating adding in some, like, canned audience applause. I was like, did somebody... You know what, I could do that in post. But, I mean, so, yeah, uh, Pac-Man. Um, <laughs> I'll give credit words, too. I mean, the fact that he's speaking is kind of weird, but the voice they gave isn't bad. Yeah, I like it. So who's the second Pac-Man? Oh, you mean Miss Pac-Man? That's Pac Jr. Whoa, oh, Pac Jr. Where'd Pac-E go? Yeah, where'd he go? Well, there was a game and then Pac-Man spontaneously Ooh, combusted. Oh. No, he just teleported on top of the fruit tree. Oh. I'm not doing anything. I love how this Pac-Man is literally just taking what's going on right now, and it's like, Ooh. Honey, are you teleporting all over the place again? I was about to say, it's like, you're not 24 anymore. I mean, okay. in four hours I won't be. Careful. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we were recording this on the cusp of Vicky's birthday. Yay. Oh, that's right. Happy Burb Day, Vicky. For all we know, it might be uploaded on his birthday. No, oh, it's not going to be that. Oh, oh jeez. Pac-Man, stop what you're doing and seriously, wait. stop acting, stop acting like you have no control over you. Hey. <sighs> they drew me too many arms. Debatable. Oh god, he's flying. Wait, was that related to what happened during his twentieth birthday? Yeah, because uh, Pac-Man World One. Yeah. Ouch. Oh, really? yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, his birthday party was no. Everyone got kidnapped. I forgot about that. His candle is extinguished. He's dead. Is Daddy gonna? back mommy i couldn't care less also wow holy i just yeah i realized like wow the plot for a lot of sonic's game uh, sonic's pac-man <laughs> sonic only had one game about his birthday oh ooh. that's far away now ooh. by the way for those that grew up with the Genki version like me you don't get this scene huh. really it just starts right at the start of this level that's yes weird. i always found that kind of weird but i guess it is what it is Oh, by the way, for those that have played Pac-Man World 1, this is Orson. Yeah, the ghost oh, that can the uh, talk man. Who's the friendly ghost, I guess. There was a friendly ghost? Well, he's friendly here. What are we doing Wow, well, now I'm actually hearing it, real talk. I think Pac-Man's voice actually does remind me of a slightly higher version, higher pitch version of, of Sonic, like Roger, like Roger, like Roger's Sonic. I, can hear I don't it. really get Roger out of it. Well, again, higher pitched Roger. No, I just mean like. Never mind. Actually, one thing I will admit, looking back on Orson, I almost forgot that in the original, in his original appearance, he had some big old eyes. Yeah. Well, he was a baby. Oh, you're down there. Now he's like some tech student or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is tech. I guess he had. Is that why he was working on that Pac-Man console? Like, is he controlling the world? He's co more so... He, the Pac-Man console he was primarily using as a means to teleport Pac-Man to this world, and, well, we're gonna learn why he teleported us to, you know, the slums in just a bit. Oh, yeah, by the way, Pac-Man can punch in this game. 
Ooh. Why? He could kick in the first in the previous game. In Smash Brothers, he can, and nobody well, got upset. Uh, yeah, because that's 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 one of the oddities about this. So, um, a good majority of Pac-Man's moves from one and two do return. Like he still has the butt bounce, he still has the rev roll. But mm -hmm. one of the new additions that they made to it, and they put a quite a bit of reliance on it, is that he now has combat abilities. In fact, a lot of his abilities Hi. from the from the original games are more so uh, monsters, redesigned to fit more combat oriented oh, purposes bad, than huh? platforming, as we're about to see. Uh, Ew. Yeah, what's with these guys? These are this suddenly looks like a different game. Oh yeah, no, this game They're is. They're not even. Much they kind of remind me of the first boss from Spyro Three. Oh yeah, the um that the frog butts. looking thing. Yeah, kind right. of. If it had if it had like actual arms. Careful, mm. careful. Okay. Oh yeah, the fro yeah the frog bunny guy. Oh jeez, come on. So one bit of advice I'll give right off the bat: assuming the um, enemies aren't spiked, just butt bounce into them. It does more damage than your punches. Or yeah. just you run nice past them, I guess. Real. Oh, a revel can also kill most enemies in one hit, but it's also very unruly to use. Mm -hmm. yeah, do we have sure. to fight them, or do we just the one go enemy. past them? If they're all lined up, you only hit the one. I, I, I have I, had one. I have had one instance where I actually was able to um, literally collide with every like all four of those mooks right then and there, which be leads me to think that the whole rev rolling attack is sort of, you know, herky jerk in terms of how many how many mooks decides to ra ram into at the time. And, and Aki, I did see a Simple Flip stream where they were playing this game. Is it just, okay, I will say, if there's something I want to do from Simple Flips one time, is they had a really neat idea, which was, imagine if James and Hype and I all picked a game that we had never touched in our life, never knew anything about, and we just, just going off of our own, like, pure skill or whatever, just tried to who could, see who could beat the game the fastest, having no prior knowledge of the game at all. <laughs> I still I remember race. that race. I remember Hype bringing up a similar idea, at least in my case. Just a good luck finding a game that I've never that I've never touched before that's a, <laughs> that's a uh, platformer. But, uh, fair, um, that is fair. But I was going to say, um, and, and sorry, but yeah, from that video I saw Icky, right yes, not every... Water. No worries. But yeah, having seen that video, Icky, I can say, yeah, not every encounter is required, but... I guess we should talk about that. James, what's the purpose of the point count on the upper left? It's just score. Nothing more oh. to it than that, which I do think is one of the more lamer aspects of the game. Like, the fact there is a score system, but they do nothing with it aside from the usual leaderboards sort of thing before leaderboards were actually a thing. Right, like... I mean, what was the point of the score in the, the first or second games? Well, like, or like with the score counter treated like, you know, for the whole anniversary, treated like classic Pac-Man that for a certain number, like, once you reach a certain score, you'll get a free one up. Which... Or in, like, uh, Pac uh, Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness, once you get a certain point quota, you get a extra star Who thing. Made all this weird junk? Oh, yeah, like extra... Oh, that's right. Uh, so, James, your thoughts on this so far? Uh, like I said, I do think Pac-Man World 3A does have some interesting ideas in play. I just think that, on the whole, it does feel like an ambitious project handled by a team that doesn't do ambitious projects all that well. Like, yeah, like yeah. let me put it to you guys this way. I mean, Blitz, ga Blitz games, they're not terrible developers, but you, but you but there's a reason why you primarily see them just make licensed games more than anything. I mean, what did they make yeah. before this? Well, they they did um, the Frogger 2 Swampy's Revenge, which was a pretty good game. Oh, they did? Yep. They also they also made um, they also made the two Fairly Odd Parents games, which I will say the second one's actually pretty good. Huh. Uh, I, I remember, breaking the I rules? Remember the uh, okay. Shadow Showdown is what I'm Shadow talking about. Breaking, okay. breaking the rules is fine, too. I do think that Shadow, Shadow Showdown is a much better game, though. Hmm. Elson, why did you throw me down a well? Let me get back to you on that, well, he did say teleporting was a little bit fetiky. Yeah, but he totally did that on purpose. He's the bad guy. Like, he's the designated bad guy species. Actually, yeah. that's actually not true, because another thing that this game's a little infamous for is that, like... The ghosts in this game are actually our allies, because just to delve into the story a bit, there's this one scientist who feels like he's ripped straight out of Vader Zim. He's trying to sap the energy of the spectral world, which is the home of the ghosts. He's sapping the energy of their world to power his evil deeds. And because of that, uh, the ghosts are relying on Pac-Man to help them defeat the scientists so they can reclaim their world. And Pac-Man is okay with this because... He's like, I think he's just real, well because it's gonna affect the Pac Pac Man's world if nothing's done. Fair, fair. First the ghosts, then the Pac Man. It's really one of those cases where you're dealing with an enemy that literally threatens everything, even yeah. yourself and your enemies. That's true. Mm. 
there comes a point where you're gonna have to make a compromise and actually side with those that you've you know chased chased around for so long literally chased around for so long now interesting that they have a little save point in the middle of a level uh how long or how big are these levels they can be pretty sizable like some of them don't take too terribly long to finish like you could probably beat some of them in like 10 minutes and then there's others that could take roughly around maybe a half hour oh nice wall jumping Oh yeah, no. Um, one thing I will say uh, in favor of Pac-Man World Three, they do sort of give Pac-Man a little more athleticism in some regard. Although I do think they, in doing that, they also sort of nerfed some of his more iconic move sets. Like again, the butt bounce isn't quite as useful for platforming purposes. Neither is the, and the rev rolls a lot stiffer as a result. I don't mind the fact I'm standing on st standing on those. Yeah, I was so confused I will... there for a moment. <laughs> I will say, like the rev roll in use is a bit finicky. The level design does actually try to make more use out of it than the other games. I... Mm, that's where I'm not entirely... I don't entirely agree there, considering like the fact that you have a little more leeway with your rev roll in the, in the earlier games than you do here. Mm -hmm. and here. Well, and in this game, I feel like they're far more context sensitive. Well, I just... I also mean that in the sense of, like, yeah, they're context sensitive, but it's kind of like the opposite effect of the second game, where it's like... like Aside from, like, maybe one or two instances, you don't really have, like, a real need to use it too often. Okay. Not really, but the game gives you just enough no, enough reasons to use it. In other words, is it really all that sensitive to context to begin with? <laughs> yeah. Uh, sure, whatever whatever you say, Beardy. <laughs> it's Birdie. Birdie. <laughs> I scare you. birdies. Uh, but, um... We'll get to that game eventually. No worries. I see a combat system. Um, do you? Is the villain a fun villain to like see, or kind he's of more a little on the dull side? He's Aww. he. There's there's a there's a decent enough framework for him, but he does kind of feel like a. He feels like a half-rate Doctor Nefarious. Yeah. I see. Okay. There's like reserve Pac-Man health over there, or are those extra lives. Uh, the the pack health is still there. Is the same. Oh yeah, those little pack dot pack men you see. Those are those are lives. Huh. Gotcha. So it's not just like a traditional counter. Nope. It, well, it sort of is. It's just it just looks it just looks different. I the, you do you do start getting more traditional numbers once you start reaching a certain threshold. That honestly looks a little bit misinforming to me. What the bridge? Mm -hmm. No 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 the um extra the lives because in the previous two games. Extra lives were relegated to a number, not just like pictures. Oh, oh. okay. Yeah, thank God, players. I thank God I fell down there because I could actually repeat the, repeat this dialogue sequence. Orson, okay, good. It does repeat. A nasty creep named Irwin. Typical megalomania. Irwin. That's his name. <laughs> you mean the silly uh, little friend from Billy and Mandy? I can get across the goo now. <laughs> All right. The one that stole Grim's sight. You know the type. Oh, d d wait. Does this mean Pack Junior is going to become evil now? No, um, no, he just knows the type of type of evil bastards that he's facing. Yeah, freaking yeah, that spooky. That you got that, whoever was in the first I was game. Gonna say, that, is, that is one thing I will give World 3, is that, like, the plot may be a little on the iffy side. I do like a lot of the dialogue in it. Some of, it's, some of it does seem pretty, uh, pretty, you know, genuinely funny. I, it feels a little I, bit I more smarmy than your standard Pac-Man fare. I don't mind the personality they gave Pac-Man over, say, Go See Adventures, where he's kind of a dorky kid. Like, I like this sort of, like, you know, like, he, he's been around the block a number of times. In other adventures. words, Pac-Man the Ghostly Adventures, where he's just a kid. A kid with a ver with a voracious app appetite. In a really stupid, stupid world. Whereas here, I do appreciate that this is, like, this Pac-Man, yeah, he's definitely been around the block, but I also appreciate that he's not exactly what I would call... Um, Naive, cynical. No, it's not. He's oh, not. He's very. He stole the happy flappy hero. Thank you very much. He can be sassy, but at the same time, he still has that. You know, level. He still has that bit of a charm to him that most um, hero heroes have. It's kind of like. Um, uh, I want to make this comparison because we're kind of working on it at the same time. At the time of recording, I was half tempted to compare him to Ty. <laughs> I guess. Also, oh geez, these are different ghosts. He has a little, he has a little more bark to him than Ty does, ironically. 
These are angry um, ghosts. And, and you can argue he also has about as much bite. Yeah, so yeah. Um, instead of ghosts, we're dealing with spectral monsters. Again, they're tough. Uh -oh. uh, as Orson said, they're tougher than ghosts. And, I mean, literally, they're tougher because they they move a lot faster than your normal ghost. Yeah, they're, they're certainly catching up to you quicker. Oh my gosh, they can multiply, you, uh, too. Can they kill you in, like, one hit? No, no, they only took up one health pip earlier. Oh. <gasps> I mean, with the extra lives set up as, like, little icons, I expect them to act as, like, you know, actually dangerous enemies. To the point oh. where, like... Whoa, nice. So like, it would have been interesting if, say, there's the regular enemies and then there are the spectral enemies, which kill you in one hit. But in those cases, you're aiming to get to the power pellet before they get to you. Uh, I feel considering how, how fast these guys move, I think that would be a little on the um, iffy side, because they yeah, because I'll just say this right now, they actually do throw in quite a bit of um, spectral monster oh, rushes at you throughout the game. I mean, it's as if they made this whole combat okay. system. The spectral monsters come from and the sad part is, is that the, the whole the Irwin. whole gimmick behind them really doesn't change all that much. Mm -hmm. Game it, Irwin. Power pellet, do your thing. Don't you ghosts have something to do with that? Right. It's our home too. Now can you see why I need your help? I don't know exactly. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Is, but it involves mm -hmm. my home, which is why I'm in a seriously bad mood. Fine. Come and find me at the I, I guess it's I completely forgot to ask, further. having forgotten how Pac-Man World One ends. Is Pac-Man okay with Orson? I I feel like it's come to a point now where like he may have he may have his eternal rivalry with the ghosts, but I don't think he sees them as like really really dangerous threats. Maybe it's kind of like the um, the relationship between Sonic and Eggman in Boom series. That honestly, the cartoon, I mean, not the. Um... Yeah, I would say that's like the perfect comparison. He, he literally treats them the same way Sonic does, treats Eggman. I was about to. I was actually about to make like a different comparison nice. of like they have about as much malice towards each other now as like he has about as much malice towards them now as Mario does to Bowser. Yeah. I mean, they're still enemies, it's yeah. just oh, cool. that, like, oh, cool. you know, they have time to play go-karts. Actually, the more I stop and think about it, you could actually, com you could probably compare Pac-Man and, and the relation with the ghost, kind of like how you compare Tom and Jerry. Like, for the most part, they're, they, they're against each other, but there are times where they will just buck up and, you know, help each other out. So in that case, you could also compare Pac-Man and, and the ghosts and Tom and Jerry to Mappy? Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> I mean, it's essentially the same same idea, it's just that, imagine if Tom was Tom was a gang lord. I kind of like to look at this, uh, bonus stage. Yeah, how, yeah, how does, how do these controls, they, uh, compare to how they did in, uh, World 2? Um, they do run a little, they do run a tad smoother than the, um, Pac-Man World, World 2, um, mazes, and they actually do add in a few more gimmicks compared to the, compared to that game, whereas, like, sometimes, honestly, it's kind of like a very... Oh light version of, like, uh, Pac-Man arrangement in that you'll sometimes get these items that'll help you out, and then there's also the occasional Galaga bug, bug that'll pop out and spew out more um, pellets for you to eat. Okay. Though, so if oh. you don't play your cards right, you could just munch them. Yeah, because I was going to say, I, I imagine oh, the go. goal is still collect all the pellets to win the level. Right. Now, are, are there the... any... Go hmm. you first, Icky. Is the game still level-based, or is it just one continuous world? It's, uh... It's level-based. two pellets. I don't know, he just wants to get some, he wants to build his high score. There we go. Uh, is there a... Freeze! <laughs> is, is there an arcade, like, in World 2 to, like, collect these Galaxians for? Mm, I think there is? I don't entirely remember that, to be perfectly honest. I will say this much. If there's one thing I will say against the mazes in this game, like, that whole trippy cybernetic background you saw, get used to that. Uh, that's the only, that's the only uh, type of background there is? Mm -hmm. Yes. Eh. And also, as you probably saw, like the ghosts in the mazes are a lot more docile than the ones in the first two. Well, I mean, they're I also so. they're also fake imitations because they're not the real ghosts. They're the spooky ghosts. Actually, which, see that. you know what? I'll bring this up now, just because we're never going to actually get to see it. Uh, Pac-Man's not the only playable character in this game. He's not. At random points of the game, you actually also take control of uh, Pinky and Clyde. But Clyde. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, you get to play as you get to play as Clyde, but oh, boy. Awesome to see. they're mostly they're mostly like they're kind of like gimmicks in in and of themselves because occasionally you'll find these totem poles where Pac-Man can summon them, and afterwards they can do they can pretty much do their shtick. Like I know Pinky can create these, can actually you know make certain platforms um, you know visible for Pac-Man to stand on, whereas uh, Clyde is a little more combat focused. Or you beat the crap out of ghosts as a ghost. 
He literally scare, scares them shitless. You scare them to death. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, that's, that sounds kind of funny. Now, you may be wondering where Inky and Blinky are. Well, stay tuned. You gonna teleport me. Come on. Do they show up in this looky? They do, thankfully. Yeah, but they do. I was able to reach as far as that uh, cutscene where you may see them for the first time. Okay, cool. I find it so weird that ghosts are proficient in, like, high-tech transceiver radios. Well, Orson is at the very least. They kind of made—they kind of already made it a thing since the first game that he's supposed to be the tech whiz of the bunch. I mean, the tech and ghost of the bunch. Of, he's not uh, a wizard. Kind of an outcast because of it. Well, not an outcast, but they get on his case about. He's a teeny tiny ghost. Oh, one thing—one oh. thing I will say is kind of cool about this game is that there's special power pellets that give you special powers, oh. like like making these little uh, little ring destructor thingies. Oh, it's a, uh, the Paraloop from Knights. Yeah, that's pretty much, yeah. Neat. That's kind of cool. Paraloop. There's a handful of these. One of them is the Metal Ball returning from the other games. However, yeah. it only just makes you invincible during combat areas. Uh, right. Okay. There's another one where you literally have the powers of Thor himself. It literally just shock opponents to death. Admittedly, the, the uh, trail effect for that ability was actually really cool looking. It looked really good oh. for PS2 and stuff. So I, um, what oh. broke those? I think it was the bugs that were crawling around. Oh. Do the bugs explode? So, do you think this works better as a platformer, as a beat em up? It feels like it can't make up its mind what it wants to be, because yeah, there's plenty of platforming segments and there's plenty of beat em up segments, but it's never, it, it never really feels like, uh, like it never feels very proficient in either category. So is it like, like I still think, I still think the platforming is still for, is still more solid in, um, Pac-Man World 2, and I mean, I can play better beat 'em up. So yeah, I, I'm actually going to be skipping ahead throughout this level because you know, if I were to do the whole thing, this little this look at would take way too long to finish. Yeah, well, yeah all, like, all the levels drag a lot longer than the two. It does kind of seem like some of the levels, at least as far, especially with how they all kind of start looking the same in the same area, it almost seems to have like the Ma the Alice Madness Returns issue. Oh, listen to this. Are they outcast themselves? But now their home isn't even their own. Yeah. Yes, but they're vicious little creeps anyway. Okay. So, don't feel too <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, don't worry. About, who cares about the spectral monsters? It's like they don't, don't return in any other game. This looks arcane. Irwin's work, Orson? Erwin is such a stupid name for a bad guy. It's so generic is what it is. It's so stupid. Well, I, like, I, I can't help but think of it's like, Billy and Mandy when I, hear th uh, when I think Erwin. It's, it's not scary, and I'm, and I'm embarrassed to say it. I, was I mean, neither was Erwin. Watch out for Erwin. Here comes Erwin. I was like, yeah. Kill the Batman, yo! <laughs> I was, yeah, I was gonna say, it did sound like, Yeah, I'm just trying to take over the Spectral Rim, yo. Ow. Ow! Jeez. Why did I do that? <laughs> something, there's something, I, I don't know why there's I nearly funny. had, I nearly had, like, a, an existential crisis when my friend told me that Erwin was released by a white woman. <laughs> oh yeah, Vanessa Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. I still think she did fun. I, I still think she had a fun job. But, mm. Oh, yeah, she's a really good actress. I, I, I feel know. they all had a lot of fun with that show. I, know I mean, for fuck's sake, they got Michael McDowell for the Christmas special. I know this is not supposed to. <laughs> they also got, got freaking um, ah, freaking um, Gilbert Gottfried for the Christmas special. Yes. Hi, <laughs> mm. if you're watching this, then I've probably been turned into a vampire. <laughs> so, to help me out, just turn the page. It just goes. It's it's funny. Oh, it's such a great, uh, such a great movie. One day I'm gonna go save Christmas with a vampire. <laughs> that was my childhood dream. So thankfully, at oh. first I thought it was gonna be one of those cases where we wouldn't get to Orson until the very end of the game. No, he's just right there. Hi. Oh. I mean, we kind of need his help, so why would we wait that long? Oh, okay, I guess the other grand thing I was going to say is, since we're working with teleportation and having to, like, stop a grand, like, dimensional, you know, maniacal uh, what would you say, compared to World 2, what would you say is the variety of worlds and levels? Are they all, like, Mad Max industrial deserts? I mean, it's sort of there, but at the same time, I guess the big problem with it is that it's all very dra kind of drab and desolate, which I understand is kind of the point, like the whole, the whole idea behind Pac-Man World Three slash Adventure was that Pac-Man was supposed to be transported into a world unlike his own, which is fine. But I think this was at a point in time where you know games couldn't quite really get that get that look right yet. Talk like Talkman. You have a new Talkman, a new big giant robot Talkman. That was the villain of the first one. Yep. What? Wow, that is a Wally. That looks like a downgrade if you ask me. It looks like a mix between the the 
alien power suit thing and um, Wally. But yeah, uh, no promises, Larson. But yeah, <laughs> that's another thing that Pac-Man World Three does. In very select areas, you actually get to pilot talk, man. Define very select. I believe this was the part of key during Simple Flips's race stream when he was like, "Is this a Pac-Man game still?" <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's like we got Orson Welles, we got Billy and Mandy, and now we got fucking Power well, Billy Suit. Billy and Mandy was all. Oh, that's right. Billy. Yeah, so, yeah, I was say, that was all us for a bit of that. But uh, how does the robot control? I like the spin move. <laughs> I mean, the control, the robot himself controls fine. You got the Death Tornado spin, I see. Oh, but I see. But the spin move can overheat. Oh. Yeah, I, I do admit though, I do like the like of all, like his main defensive attack is literally just bitch slapping eh. everybody. <laughs> Get away! Yeah. 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 Gotta teach Stop you it. respect, sir. There we go. Where's completed? And also, I think they. I, also, I will say, I think they drove this part out a bit too long. Um, how many yeah, waves? I are mean, there? are you just doing About this five, for two minutes? Five. Oh jeez. Uh, but yeah, other than that, say what you will about the downgrade. I, I think this is prettier to look at than the first talk, man. I guess uh, the, there's something more iconic about the original talk, man. The fact that he actually so had a face. It looks so silly. Yeah, this just looks boring. I mean, it's kind of like looking at Wario being like, he looks silly. That's the point. I mean, I guess if it means anything, they did bring back Talkman for a Pac-Man World Rally, though. My only real issue with that, the, with that, with how they designed him in that game, is that his eyebrows look weird. Or excuse me, his unibrow. Why are you calling Talkman a character? It's a robot. In well, fact, it's a robot mech. Even still, it's like at least it looks like. Honestly, you can just if you're gonna bring up that argument, you can very well just ask like, why treat why treat the Gundam unit like a character? It looks like someone I can talk to. Now, what'd you say, James? You, you kind of... I didn't hear that last, but... Yeah, sorry. never mind. With that said, that's it for the second level. Oh, okay. Yep. I guess that is one thing I will also say against this game. I do think the end... The, beating, the, beating the levels do feel very... Meh. Meh. Is there meh. any sort of level select to replay levels? I think there is a level select, but that's that's about it, really. Cause, cause so, before we do end off our look at, how about we get a glimpse into Erwin... Yeah, might as well, because, yeah, it does, AKA, yeah, as far as the levels, like, it really does seem like it just goes from level to level with no map screen, and, oh. A.K.A. Jimmy the Jackal. The red wire or the blue wire? He has Homer Simpson hair. He does. And he captured the ghosts. Inky and Blinky are helping him? Looks like he's holding them hostage in, like, glass jars, like jellyfish. And then there's this freak right here. What the... What the fuck is that? He doesn't. What the finish. fuck is that? That's an Irwin. <laughs> yes. It looks. It, it's a. It's as if Voldemort and Homer Simpson had a illegitimate love child. It looks terrible. That, that that green thing. That orange thing had a voice that did not fit him in the slightest. Is that Mark Hamill? Nah. I think so. I'll look it up. The fact of the matter is, these things look horrible. These two look very disgusting, yes. I hate them. Uh, Eric Myers plays Erwin, and I... What the hell is this thing's name? The weird one? I don't remember. The Which weird one? thing, that's his name. Fair. I will say, I think between those two designs, I'd prefer if the, if the spherical-looking freak was the, was the actual villain as opposed to this guy. Yeah. Like, this guy just, again, you brought it up. He looks like a rejected Invader Zim villain. I think they call, I think that other, th according to this IMD page, I think that thing is called The Fiend. My god, he even sounds like Dr. Nefarious. Eric Myers, or just Harnall. Uh, yeah, they're definitely doing stuff on TV, but yeah, I can't see anything else that these characters have done that you guys would remember them from. Uh, try me. Uh, uh, Lego City Undercover. Uh, 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 I, I, I know I, I, of the game. Um, I've been tempted to try it out because I heard that that's oh, yeah, one of the way, better Lego the games. Room. What the fuck? Oh, we're in space. Uh, wow. Uh, what is this place, Orson? It's, I, it's filled with pink shit. Oh, and, oh, and Pac-Man is voiced by Martin Sherman. Martin Sherman? I feel like I've heard that name somewhere before. He, well, for one, well, for one thing, he actually, so interestingly enough, was in the, the first from. Captain America movie. Homely, is it? Um, who was he in that? Uh, all it is attributed to is Brant's aide, so an assistant to somebody named Brant. 
hmm. you know, that All brand character overlay. that the fans can't get enough of. Yeah, first they chase me, then I chase them, then they chase me. Tracking them down will be just like old times. Alrighty. <laughs> oh, so this is the spectral realm. Interesting. Pac-Man, you're sounding more and more like a sociopath every single time. Look at, <laughs> Look at that smile. That's smi the face of a natural, a cold-blooded chopper. The oh, face actually, only a chopper oh, can actually, love. Oh, actually, I can say this very interestingly enough. Um, Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. Holy crap! This dates back a long time. Actually, this uh, ever since like, so sorry. Ever since like the ever since like 2010, Pac-Man here is voiced by the guy who voices Thomas the Tank Engine. What? Huh. Fancy that. Yeah. Wait, so wait a minute. Since since what time again? 2010. So and to now. Thomas. So was the uh, CG version. Yeah, yeah. He was in Ugh. Thomas and Friends Story Time in 2020. Well, no. Oh, okay. You're talking about the actor voicing in Thomas. Yeah. I thought you were about to say like the guy still voices Pac-Man because I was about to say I'm no, pretty sure that wasn't no, him in Ghostly no, no, Adventures. No, 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 no. What if we had yeah. Ringo Starr or George Carlin to voice him? No. <laughs> George Carlin was Thomas. Well, he what he what, he was in Thomas the Tank Engine. I don't think he ever voiced Thomas. Huh. No, but he was the narrator of the original series for uh, English speaking. Kind of, well, okay, but for, yeah, I mean, oh, no. I mean, considering, the, considering the stuff he does, that does seem kind of hilarious. But yeah, it would be no. amazing. It's a unique entry, and it definitely was trying to do some new things with it. Unfortunately, I felt I feel like it was a little misguided, or not misguided, but it felt a little distracted by trying to be too much at once. Um, yeah, I, I I honestly just think overall that it was an ambitious ambitious enough idea. It's just that you can sort of tell that they kind of just dropped the ball a little too early, and as a result, we have a game here that kind of feels like a middle of the road sort of game, that mm -hmm. rather than an actually really good Pac Man World game. Yeah, and uh, just and keep I'm in mind, about it's like hmm? it could have gotten, it could have been worse or better. I guess it could have been Don Bluth. It could have been a troll yeah, in Central Park. Man. Yeah, I wonder whatever Don Bluth has been up to. Man, we'll Is he still alive? I think he's still teaching from what I remember. Well, that's good. Remember Dragon's Lair? The movie. You know what? Just one last thing before we end off. It's like, so we had, like, Don Bluth was going to be involved. I, I had this idea of, like, because it's no secret that the two worked together a lot. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they were friends up until he passed away. I had this idea of, like, if Don Bluth did a Pac-Man thing, Pac-Man himself would be voiced by Dom DeLuise. Oh, my God. I, I could actually see it. I would love that. <laughs> Why is it that I feel like maybe a little? I don't know if I can imagine Pac-Man being voiced by him of all people. What can you can you imagine Kuzula Goop Goop just showing up? Who? <laughs> you know Kuzula Goop Goop, uh, uh, Dee Dee's imaginary friend, who was also oh voiced by right, him. Kusis. I completely forgot that, that was his name, but yeah, I mean that'd be funny in a minute. But yeah, we're running this on long enough. Uh, till next time, everybody. Whenever that is. See ya. He, 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 he. I wish I knew I could do his laugh.